I stand here representing a super team in our local community who are riding the international wave of a health strategy or health initiative known as social prescribing. Now, social prescribing as its concept is linking people to non-medical services that would bring about improvements in their overall, overall well-being and health, with the key ingredient being social connection. I stand as a champion for the cause because social prescribing is part of my story that has brought me from becoming burnt out, burnt out in my general practitioner work through to discovering a way of being within my community and with my patients to providing a healthcare strategy that I felt provided great connection with my people that I care for and a medicine that I felt really, really works. So now as a general practitioner, in, the, in examples of how it works for me, is if a person came to me expressing ideas of ill health in their mental health, like depression, or struggling with chronic disease, in place of or alongside, not only would I be thinking about prescribing to counselling or psychology or medication, I'd also prescribe social connection or social connection through activity. Now, how did I go from being a local GP that was burning out to social prescriber to dance instructor and now known in my local area as the dancing doctor? <laughs> well, 20 years ago, I landed in the community of Castlemaine with all the ideals of a trained GP, loving the idea of being in a community where I could look after people from all the transitions of life through the cradle to the grave, working in a clinic and at the hospital, from maternity birthing services through to palliative care with all the transitions in between. I saw it as a first class ticket to taking that ride with people through all the transitions of their life. But within six years only, I was already burning out. I was feeling overwhelmed by the pressures of an un unrelenting health system. And the type of medicine I was doing was very narrow, based around diagnosis, management, management that usually involved medications. It wasn't hitting the mark and it certainly wasn't allowing my patients, the people I cared for, to thrive. Together, I felt we were both surviving and sinking in the system. For me, burnout looked like losing connection with my work, my vocation, which meant losing connection with the people that I care for, my patients. And that started eking out into my life. I lost connection with my family, my loved ones. The way of fixing it for me was to work harder at doing the same thing. And that just got me deeper and deeper into a loss of hope, a sense of failure, and slipping into, de into depression. Luckily for me, I had a family around me that were watching this happen, and they were willing to do what it would take to refine myself and refine our connection. So that looked like uprooting from our community, moving into state, because we felt a change of scene was what it was going to take for us to reconnect, for me to reconnect myself and my family and the work that I do as a general practitioner. So I took that opportunity to work with various integrative medical services, so traditional Chinese medicine, I worked alongside psychologists and naturopaths, and I explored, I tried to look under every rock to find meaning in my own work. But the shift occurred when I started changing the way I approached that connection with the patients in the room, in that consulting room. I started asking questions about what would your life look like if you weren't dealing with chronic pain or mental health issues? What would you be doing right now if those things didn't exist? What would your life look like? What floats your boat? One particular moment was a man who presented for a Valium script for his back pain. And he'd also got hooked into Valium during a recent jail stint as part of his withdrawal from marijuana. So, of course, I got into doctory mode, talking about the ills of Valium and took a full pain history and how this young man had become incapacitated from any purposeful work or employment. And I decided to change tack and say, hey, you couldn't wave a magic wand and your chronic pain disappear and you weren't managing that. What would your life look like? What would you be doing? And he started talking about his craft. He was a silver metal 
sculpturist. And he'd taken up a tune while I was in jail to really fine tune his art. And then we started talking about how he could bring that into his life right now. And he talked about his despair of going back to the skate parks he used to hang out with and seeing the young people there going down the same dark path that he went down through to loss of hope and drug taking and despair. And he said, I'd love to maybe teach my craft to these young people and teach them the skill and alongside might have the opportunity to mentor people and these young people away from that dark path. During this whole conversation, I noticed and fed back to him that he started to sit up straighter. His eyes were brighter, he was engaged. And I asked him, do you feel any pain? And his eyes went more agog, his jaw dropped. He said, I have no pain. So he left that room, I hope, with some hope and uplifted and inspired to look down another path of joy. But also in that moment, I felt for me and my work that there was a true connection and it made the medicine work and the therapy that I wanted to be a part of. So it was that moment on that I said, I want to go to those moments in healthcare. That moment also taught me a lesson for myself that I needed to give myself that same joy, that same gift. So with that, our family returned back to our community and I started engaging in the things that I used to love doing. And I engaged with my family. And that looked like kayaking together, exercising together. I joined our local park run community. And eventually, I turned to also Shigong, traditional Chinese medicine, and then came the dancing. Along that path, I found that the key to these activities bringing health was social connection. And social connection is like in the collective, medicine, it's like medicine for the soul. And in more scientific terms, neuroscientists have been on to this for years, that when people are connected, our nervous systems mirror each other through our nervous systems, hormone systems, there's a deep molecular change in our physiology and our biology. And I see this when I'm working in the birthing suite as a great example, where the woman is flooding with oxytocin in the process of birthing, the physiological movement to the miracle of birth. And then the people in that space, the healthcare providers, the doctors, the midwives and the support team, are flooded with the same hormonal nervous system change that drives them to provide care, provide support to that miracle of birth. Another one of my favourite examples is on the dance floors across the world <laughs> where that transfer of energy is uplifting and inspires people for joy. So I started social prescribing. At that moment, I didn't know what social prescribing was, but it was a movement across the world, from the UK, through to the United States and everywhere in between, developing procedures within the community where linking people with activities that would bring them back to themselves and their joy was an important part of the medicine. And the evidence and the audits of these programs show that there's significant benefits when social connection is in the space to all levels of their care and their wellbeing. So physiological, psychological, even their immune systems and hormone systems come into balance. So the science is in there, the science works, and this is the medicine that I was going after. So how did the, the dance thing come about? Well, when I returned to my community, my sister uh, was setting up a local fun run. And of course, she made me be the mascot, the yellow bird who danced at the end of each run. So my dancing, according to my teenagers, was getting lamer and lamer. <laughs> so I approached the local dance school, the Movement uh, Zone Dance Studio with Sarah Cook, and she just started up an adult dance class. And that dancing led to me doing flash mobs and a part of the crew, me doing backspins in the aisle seven of our local supermarket. The community saw this and the patients I was looking after saw this and they started pouring into the, my door as well as the dance instructor's door at the dance studio saying, we want a piece of Dr. Mays' medicine. <laughs> we want a bit of that. And so we set up Silvertop's dance therapy class. And that group of people share beautiful stories of 
people ranging in different physical capacities and age, finding their mojo, finding their joy, reclaiming their health. And so they've become the flagship of our local project in the community called Get Connected. Now, Get Connected is set up by our community house and our local council around the concept of social prescription. So it's setting up formal referral processes for GPs like myself and other health practitioners to link people with activities in their community. They are linked with a Get Connected community connector who meets up with a person, walks through the activities they might be interested in, and then walks them through the many barriers that might be in place to connect them with that activity. And there's a formal process of follow-up. And also, every week, all the participants in the project get to meet and connect in a chatty cafe and share their stories in a safe and social environment. Now, social connection, social prescribing may not be the answer for everyone, but for me, it's becoming, I want it to be an important uh, tool in a primary physician's tool toolkit. From the project, my dream is that the powers that be see that healthcare needs this, our community needs this, and that eventually social prescribing will be a key ingredient in what healthcare provides the people that we love and care for. So I can't help myself. I need to leave you guys with a prescription. <laughs> Reclaim joy and get connected.